What assessment has the First Minister made of the impact that the transition to the personal independent payment is having on people in Wales? Well, like other aspects of the UK Government's welfare reform, we're still awaiting detailed information on personal independence payments from DWP. When that is available, the impact will, of course, be considered by our Ministerial Task and Finish Group for Welfare Reform. Thank you, First Minister. You'll probably be aware that the Public Accounts <coughs> Committee in Westminster recently described the PIP rollout as a fiasco. In Torvine, I've got constituents who've been waiting six, seven, eight months and more for a decision on their PIP payments with no end in sight. Someone approached me recently who's having delays because the medical assessor failed to send their paperwork on to the DWP. And the contact email address supplied by Capita regularly bounces back inquiries despite my office having raised this issue with them on a number of occasions. First Minister, what steps are you taking to monitor the impact of this change on people in Wales? And what are you doing to lobby the UK Government for urgent improvements to a system that's clearly failing people who really need support? Well, in February of this year, we published a report on the impact of the welfare reforms in Wales as a whole, and indeed at local authority uh, level. That forms part of the programme of research commissioned by the Ministerial Task and Finish Group that I referred to. And that research assessed the impact of 14 benefit and tax credit changes, including the replacement of the DLA with the PIP. But I note, of course, what Westminster's Public Accounts Committee has uh, said. Uh, yes, it is nothing short of a fiasco, but the serious point is that some of our most vulnerable society, people in society are being let down by a system that is untested and failing. Disabled people being given long term unconditional support uh, through employment support allowance has increased a scheme, of course, introduced by the previous government. But taking um, a more open uh, approach, um, the cross party group on disability, which has been co chaired by myself and colleague Rebecca Evans prior to her recent uh, elevation, has been in dialogue with the DWP over uh, personal independent payments for some time. And equally, McMillan Council Supporting Wales would tell me they've been working with DWP officers to influence uh, this agenda. What, therefore, dialogue has the Welsh Government had or could it have with these third sector organisations who are actively working to address the problems with delays uh, and hopefully, therefore, deliver better services for the people that we all share concerns for? Well, the member talks as if his party bears no responsibility at all for the shambles that we see before us. We will, of course, work with any third uh, sector organisation to try and address the shambles that his party have themselves introduced. I'd, I'd remind him that in 2018, it's expected there'll be about 42,500 fewer claimants in Wales under the new system compared to the DLA. And the average annual loss for those who lose entitlement is estimated to be around £3,600. That is not the fault of this government, nor of the party I represent. It's the fault of his. Lindsay Whittle. Uh, uh, thank you, Chloe. Uh, well, First Minister, uh, I, I appreciate uh, and understand your exasperations and concerns that, that, uh, that the Welsh Government, of course, has no control over the United Ki uh, Gov Kingdom's government switch from disability uh, living allowance to the personal independence payment. However, w w this switch is now happening. Um, and can you please tell us what the Welsh Government will be doing? I am more concerned with people suffering from serious mental health problems, and how can you monitor and help those, please? Uh, well, appreciating fully your genuine concerns on this. Well, as I mentioned uh, earlier on, there is a ministerial task and finish group. Uh, it is assessing the impact of the welfare reforms, and we will continue to lobby on behalf of those most vulnerable, including, of course, uh, those who suffer from mental health problems. Question two, Alan Fred Jones. Uh, <coughs> 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 Mae'r golled yn debyg y bod y saith can mil oedd wedi'n deall. Um, Rydyn ni'n gwisno senol oedd eich un gyhoeddi, wrth gwrs um, 
cynydd yn y gwariant uh, ar fentraeaeth o drwch chi o filiwn a hanner. Fi wedi'r rhai pobl yn dweud bod uh, hyn yn sunigedd iawn ac yn symud uh, ar ian o un lle i'r llall. Um, ar bas sail y gwneithbwyd y penderfyniad hwn, a sut mae'r llywodraeth yn bwriadu cyrraedd i amcanion o gynyddu nifer y siaradwyr Cymraeg trwy dorri ar y gellideb o ddysgu Cymraeg i oedolion? Well, in Gitter, of course, Marine is a good high board now. The Gunner know the Algali, the Ski Camrag, E. Blant. On Gaithway, the way they see in the chamber, uh, and lean at that Ganya do it at Bodra Vuyer, Arian Dim, and Arian Newith, where is another preed? But Ricali, I'll join or Yethi or Levith Erith and Kishideb, where is it with Peth or Arian and Arian Newith, or Ned Arian and Yan Mentre Yath. Uh, er hersi gyda ni yw sicrhau bod rhywbeth sydd yn siarad Cymraeg, yn defnyddio'r Gymraeg, ac yn sicrhau bod nhw'n trosglwyddo'r Gymraeg hefyd i'r genhedlaeth nesa. Uh, wrth gofio'r uh, blaenoriaeth hynny, felly, uh, hwn oedd y penderfyniad fyny sydd. Trisi Davis. Llywydd, uh, prif yn i gydog. Uh, pa fath o drafodaeth i eang a gawswch chi cyn i dorri gyllideb Cymraeg i oedolion? Ac yn benodol, ydych chi wedi colli cyfle i roi sgiliau yn yr iaith? Um, I'r thraw yn ysgolion cynradd Saesneg um, i ei helpu nhw uh, defnyddio Cymraeg achlysurol yn y dosbarth. Wel na, mae'r trafodaeth arferol, wrth gwrs, ydy fe'r yn llywodraeth, ond wrth gwrs, fel um, yr aelod yn gwybod ma na um, adolygiad dwi'n cymryd lle o'r cwricwlwm yng Nghymru, a mae Cymraeg fel ail iaith yn rhan o hwnna. Uh, Ni'n gweud sawl gwaith yn y siambr hyn, bod yn bwysig dros ben bod ni'n creu siaradwyr Cymraeg hyderus yn yr ysgolion Cyfrwng Saesneg hefyd, a mae'n gallu cael ei wneud, wedi gweld ein cael ei wneud mewn uh, olia un ysgol yng Nghymru. Simon Thomas. Uh, Diolch Llywydd. Um, I chi newydd cyfadau, uh, prif i ni dod bod hwn yn symud ar ion o un man o gyllideb bydd llall, ond byddai chi hefyd siŵr o fod yn cyfadau bod y gynhadledd fawr a gynhaliwch chi am flwyddyn gyfan yn holi y cwestiwn â hyn, wedi dweud yn glir bod i eisiau gwafio ar sefadwyr Cymraeg a cefnogi nhw yn ei cymunedau, ac a cefnogi uh, oedolion i ddysgu Cymraeg, achos mae'n fyrbwyll iawn i meddwl bod chi'n gallu symud o un i llall pan bod y, y dysgwyr Cymraeg oedolion yma, a nhw i eni yn aml iawn, i'r plant sy'n mynd dwy ysgolion Cymraeg and, ac yn bobl sydd yn dysgu yn ei cymunedau, sydd yn helpu gadw'r iaith mewn cymuned. A fewch chi felly ail ystyried y strategaeth yma a gyfer y dyfodol? Wrth gwrs, brogus i gyda ni yw, uh, sefyllfa ar iano, uh, sef digon ar ian ar gael, felly wrth gwrs, byddai'r penderfynu wedi bod yn wahanol. Ond nid felly yw'r sefyllfa ar hyn o bryd, uh, o achos yn ei mraig ni fel llywodraeth uh, i uh, rhoi uh, blaenoriaeth i, i, i'r pethau uh, yn ein barn ni sydd yn bwysig ar hyn o bryd, sef wrth gwrs, sicrhau dyfodol y mentre iaith, sicrhau defnydd y Gymraeg uh, yn yr economi uh, yn rhan o Gymru fel dyffryn teifi uh, er enghraifft, a felly newydd yw'r blanoriaeth ar hyn o bryd. We now move to questions for party leaders, and this afternoon, standing into the leader of the opposition, have Paul Davis. Yeah. Thank you, uh, presiding officer. For the record, can the uh, First Minister give me the latest mortality figures for the Princess of Wales Hospital? Could I welcome the, uh, the member back to his uh, position that I know many of in his group think he should have held in the first place, but uh, these are, are not matters for, for me. I know the mortality rates in the Princess of Wales Hospital uh, certainly are, are not uh, a, a ones that give us cause for concern. What the figures are offhand, I could not tell him, but I can write to him about that. Well, let me uh, help the uh, First Minister because he clearly does know the answer to my first uh, question. The mortality figure is 105 for the Princess of Wales Hospital. And let me remind the First Minister and the Chamber about mortality data in other hospitals. The latest mortality figure for Glanguilly Hospital is 130, and at Neath Port Talbot it's 127. Any figure over 100 should be a cause for concern. The report by Professor Andrews into events at ABMU clearly showed that problems exist within our health boards. Now, even a member of your own party First Minister, the highly respected Anne Cloyd said, and I quote, it is not surprising that people are worried about what is actually going on. This is horribly similar to the murkiness that surrounded the mortality statistics for mid-staffs, unquote. Now, the First Minister whipped his Assembly members <coughs> to block her evidence twice, and tomorrow she will finally appear in front of the Assembly's health 
committee. Will he now listen to her and to her evidence? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see what she says. Uh, I mean, first of all, the member has to uh, remember, he cannot selectively quote the Andrews report at me. The Andrews report was absolutely clear that it was not a mid-staff situation. He cannot uh, refer to that report and then pretend that something uh, is in it that, it that is not in it. Uh, and I have to uh, point out to him that uh, his party, as we see from the uh, news reports across the border, is presiding over something critically bad as far as the health service is concerned there. Well, here we go again. The First Minister obviously prefers to talk about the health service in uh, England. And let me remind him, he is the First Minister of Wales, but he clearly wants to talk about England because perhaps he's ashamed to talk about the Welsh health service. Now, First Minister, it's now been exactly a year since we, on this side of the chamber, called for a Keogh-style inquiry to take place here in Wales. For a whole year, you and your government have made excuses. You first stated that it would cost too much. Since then, we've had the Andrews report into the truly shocking examples of bad practice at Princess of Wales. We've had some of the worst mortality figures in the UK. And even Sir Bruce Keogh has said there needs to be further investigation. A year has been too long for patients across the whole of Wales, First Minister. Will you now commit to holding an inquiry and sort this mess out once and for all? He has some nerve in accusing me of referring to England when his own Prime Minister went on and on and on and on about Wales. When the Secretary of State for Wales went on and on and, sorry, former Secretary of State for Wales, went on, there's only the grin on that bench is, on and on and on about Wales. His own Prime Minister debased himself by coming to Wales and saying, and I quote, that Offers Dyke is the line between life and death. And yet he accuses us of trying to divert attention away from the health service. The reality is that the situation in England is shocking. And whenever they attack the health service in Wales, you can guarantee it's to, to move attention away from what they are doing as a party across the border. On and on they go about having a public inquiry. We've had the Andrews report. We know and have been open about the challenges in the health service in Wales. It's a shame his party is so secretive about what happens in England where they are in charge. We now move on to the Welsh Liberal Democrats, and this afternoon we have standing in for the leader, Ali Roberts. Free Winnie Dog, an all of me smouth, or the matter be Kirsty Williams, where the weather is both he and Winnie Dog Yechid, and only bottle or am serried arrows are covered guasinate, psychiatric plant are glassoid. Three me send the weather arach, the cohoid figure did the eye weather, and they put a civil fang with thuggy. Cynedd o dros cant dai ddeg y cant o flwyddyn i flwyddyn yn nifer y bobl i fynd sy'n aros mwy na phedair wythnos ar ddeg am driniaeth. Pam felly, dyw eich llywodraeth chi dal methu darparu cymorth mewn da bryd i'r bobl i fynd mwy a bregus pan maen nhw angen cymorth? Beth gwrs ynglyn a bobl i fynd yn enwedig gyda gwasanaethau psychiatric. Ni'n gwybod bod y byrdd ei iechyd yn ymwybodol o hwn, a maen nhw'n cymryd camer hyn o bryd er mwyn sicrhau bod bethau yn, yn gwella. Wrth gweud hynny, wrth gwrs, mi'n wir i weud dros y gwasanaethau iechyd yn gyfan gwbl, bod yna mwy o mwy o alw ar wasanaethau, a ni'n fel llywodraeth yn sicrhau bod mwy o gallu da gael er mwyn cwrdd ar heriau hynny. Dwi'n derbyn bod na'n fwy o alw, ond cwestiynu os oes na weithredu yr anna llywodraeth dwi, ac os oes na bwysau yn cael eu rhoi ar y byrddi echyd, ach os ma na feisydd erill o fewn y gwasanaeth iechyd yma yng Nghymru, lle mae aseroedd aros yn gweithogi yn arw, a lle mae'n amlwg bod eich llywodraeth yn methu gweithredu. Wythnos dweith o fe gafwyd adroddiad gan yr ombudsman uh, yn Betsy Cadwallader, oedd yn sôn am wasanaethau ophthalmoleg. Ar draws Cymru, mae nifer y cleifion sy'n aros dros 9 mis am eu hapwyntiad cynta wedi cynyddu dros 130 cant i 1,000 ar ddeg. Pam nad oes modd i chi sicrhau fel llywodraeth triniaeth amserol i bobl hynny o'r angwasanaethau optomegol lle mae yna beryg bod nhw'n colli i golwg? Well, Problem gyda angwasanaethau op optomegol yw'r ffaith bod yna ormodd o gleifion yn cael i gyfeirio at... Um, uh, Rhyna sydd yn arbenigio cyn dilyn nhw. A mae'n agormodd y bobl yn goffa mynd i weld arbenigwyr yn yr ysbytau a just mynd i weld nhw 
a wyn ni dim yn digwydd, a wyn ni mynd i weld nhw to'r ail dro'r trydydd to, mae'n rhaid newydd y ffordd mae hwn yn digwydd, a sicrhau bod mwy o bobl yn gallu cael i gofalu amdano gyda doctoriaid, gyda optometrists, achos nhw sy'n gallu er mwyn gofalu am bobl, a wedi ni cyfreithio at yr arbenigwyr pan mae'r amser yn iawn. Nid felly mai ym mhob rhan o Gymru, a mwyn yn gyfer newid. The case of the initial appointments, which are of concern in certain areas, for example, um, research that we've recently undertaken indicates that children in Hawilva Local Health Board are waiting nearly five months for hearing tests. Ear, nose and throat referrals in Abertawe Bromod Ganug are taking over eight months. And even if you manage to get into the system, if you need a hearing aid reassessment in Coom Tav LHB, then you have to wait an incredible 17 months for your second appointment. First Minister, month after month, year after year, you stand there telling us to wait and it will all get better. The question is, how much longer do the people of Wales have to wait before they see an improvement under this government? The member will forgive me if I'm um, sceptical of Lib Dem research figures. There are many of us in this chamber who will know what it's like to be told that as a result of a by-election the Lib Dems will sweep the board in Wales. There are others in other parties who will have the same experience. But he, he asks an important question, I, I understand that, and I can say to him that government officials will shortly be meeting with stakeholders across Wales to do a stock take of what is happening in audiology services as the basis of establishing what may be needed to enhance service quality uh, further. Uh, we are aware of the problems in Cum Taft. The Health Board does have an action plan in place to reduce the number of patients waiting over 14 weeks for reassessment, and we expect that action plan to deliver. We now move on to the leader of Plaid Cymru, Liam Wood. <coughs> First Minister, the UK Parliament is expected to rush through legislation today that includes wide-ranging powers for the state to intercept and retain uh, communications. Now, there are clauses in this bill which have previously been struck down by the Court of Justices of the European Union, and there is widespread concern that such legislation should not be rushed through. Do you believe, as Plaid Cymru does, that this legislation breaches individual civil liberties? legislation must be compliant in my view. I don't think it's the, the European Court of Justice, the European Court of Human Rights uh, and the convention rights that exist as a result of that. Uh, as we uh, in this chamber have to ensure we do not pass legislation that it infringes upon those rights, I believe Westminster must be careful not to do the same. I wonder then if the First Minister could tell us whether or not this Assembly and your government has been consulted on this legislation and whether you believe that you should be consulted uh, as a matter of course on emergency legislation of this nature. No, we have not been consulted and I think it's good practice to uh, ensure that the devolved administrations are aware of what, of what is planned and we are consulted on non-devolved issues when it comes to the justice system and I think it's good practice to do that for all matters such as this. I agree with you, First Minister, because this legislation will affect every single citizen in Wales and in the rest of the UK. Now, as you keep reminding us, you are the leader of Welsh Labour. I wonder if you can therefore tell us, will Welsh Labour MPs this afternoon be voting for this bill today? And also, I wonder if you can tell us, will they be voting for the amendment which includes the sunset clause? Well, I mean, just to explain the way things work in my party, to the Leader of Plaid Cymru, uh, Welsh Labour MPs, uh, of course, in Parliament are subject to the whip of the UK Labour Party, uh, as uh, members here, uh, Welsh Labour members here, are subject to the whip of uh, the Welsh Labour leadership here. It's a long-established principle in my party that when it comes to devolved matters, uh, these are matters for uh, me as the leader of my party. For non-devolved matters, they are primarily matters for the UK Labour Party leader, even though, of course, there is uh, constant dialogue in terms of uh, ensuring that the uh, boundary between the two moves further in the direction which I would hope that it would. Thank you. We now move back to questions on the paper. Question three, Bethan Jenkins. Will the Minister make a statement on NHS complaints redress procedures in Wales? Yes, the independent review was published on the 2nd of July and we will set out our formal response to the review in the autumn following a period of wider engagement. 
Thank you, and I look forward to that response. Last week, one of my constituents had last received answers about the care of her mother some two years after she had first raised the matter with ABMU. The process of working with the LHB to get some of those answers took over uh, their lives of the family. Um, do you believe that, does the government agree that such a long and convoluted process needs to be changed when you look at this particular complaints procedure, um, especially with regards to families facing brick walls and defensive managerial structures? And therefore, do you condemn the comments made by Professor Andrews recently, um, observation, uh, observing that um, some of the campaigners, some of the families were a vexatious minority because, of course, they don't want to be campaigners. They want to make sure that their loved ones are supported and respected and so far um, many um, of our health boards have failed on that level. No I don't condemn Professor Andrews either you accept the report or you don't you can't accept parts of it and not mm. others uh, the the point that is made about the uh, complaint system taking too long is a fair one in my view uh, I think part of the issue with the complaints process has been that it has been too strongly anchored to uh, legal proceedings and I think there must be ways of ensuring that people can have their complaints heard more quickly without the fear that somehow dealing with a complaint in that way will lead to legal proceedings in the future. In my experience that's not the, the, what most people want. They're not looking for compensation, they're just looking for answers and to make sure that such a thing doesn't happen again. And certainly there are lessons there that we will consider as a government in order to make sure that the complaints process uh, is treated far more quickly but also uh, to move it away from the legal world, if I can put it that way, where there's no desire on either party for that to happen. Darren Miller. Thank you, Presiding Officer. First Minister, not only are people waiting too long to have their concerns and complaints uh, addressed in the Welsh NHS, but we also know that the review undertaken by Keith Evans concluded that there seems to be data showing recurrent themes and repetition uh, of errors. What specific action do you intend to take as a Welsh Government to ensure uh, that when mistakes happen, they actually, uh, that the NHS actually learns lessons from those mistakes and doesn't repeat them over and over again? Well, I've already said, Sarah, uh, that of course there will be a formal response to the review. It wouldn't be right now to uh, deal with uh, parts of it in isolation rather than dealing with the review as a whole. Question four, please, Black. Thank you, Sanya. So, what plans does the Welsh Government have to reform leasehold tenures? It's unclear whether this is devolved. Not a, a phrase that uh, members will be unfamiliar with in this chamber. Uh, so at this moment in time, uh, there are no plans to reform leasehold tenures given the uh, ambiguity over whether they are devolved or not. Thank you for that answer, First Minister. Um, you'll be aware that of the controversy in, in my region in, in the El former Elba Works Estate in Gowerton regarding the leaseholds there, where residents have effectively found um, their annual rent of £50 being increased up to about £3,000. I understand this is, of course, a local issue, and I'm, not, I'm asking you to intervene in that. But will the Welsh Government review the lessons from that particular issue when it comes to look at um, future legislation in terms of leasehold to see whether um, there are other instances of where that occurs and whether it can be prevented in the future? Well, I understand in relation to the uh, issue that the member has raised that no decision has been finalised, and there are discussions taking place at the Council, and that clearly must be uh, welcomed. Uh, but, of course, what isn't clear is what the extent of the powers of this uh, chamber are when it comes to, to lease I asked this very same question this morning, uh, and uh, it's quite clear that there's, again, no clear answer. I hope, certainly, that uh, when we see the uh, second Wales Bill introduced after the next general election, that this and other matters will be clarified as quickly as possible. Mark Isherwood. Thank you. Well, in addition to um, leaseholders on the Elbra Estate in, in Gowerton, uh, we understand that uh, leaseholders of flats in uh, Cumbran, the Bronavon Housing Association, have faced bills of between 11,000 and 30,000 for um, repairs to uh, their properties. Uh, I know that these issues were raised with general support from AMs and MPs in 2012 in a centre forum uh, think tank uh, report with general cross-party agreement actions required. The UK government is looking to a redress scheme for leaseholders what action uh, will the Welsh Government take at a devolved level to address these problems? Well, again, it comes back to the point as to whether it's devolved or not. Uh, and I'm sure the, the member will join me in um, welcoming clarification uh, in any new Wales uh, bill. The difficulty is, of course, that the, uh, the leasehold system is a capricious system. 
Uh, it can lead and has led to situations, as, as we see here, where there are substantial increases in ground rent that people have to, to face. Uh, and uh, it's very difficult, of course, for the government or indeed the Assembly uh, to give views on what it might do when it's not yet clear what the extent of the competence of the Assembly is. Question five, Gwyn Price. Thank you, Clywood. What is the Welsh Government doing to promote tourism in Islwyn? Well, much is done uh, to promote uh, tourism in Islwyn and the wider area. Of course, the member has the Cwm Carn uh, Forest Drive, uh, which is a proud part of the uh, Islwyn uh, constituency. And he will be aware, of course, of uh, attractions uh, around Islwyn in the neighbouring uh, constituency of Caerphilly and further north, of course, uh, that all contribute uh, money to the economy of Islwyn and the surrounding area. Thank you for the answer. And perhaps you've just uh, answered my next question. Um, <laughs> With Cardiff and Newport being so close, and uh, my community uh, very close to these cities, what are we doing to promote the Welsh and the Gwent Valleys? Well, the Valleys Regional Park seeks to coordinate, to drive and to promote activities relating to the environment and heritage uh, across the, all the valleys of South Wales. It has a £400,000 uh, budget rather, for a two-year uh, period, uh, and that is intended, of course, to uh, help with uh, marketing. Uh, there is a, a website, uh, and certainly since 2009, the Valleys Regional Park has invested £18 million pounds in the tourism infrastructure across the valleys. Lindsay Whittle. Uh, well, First Minister, yeah, you're right. There are lots of historical and indeed natural gems in, in Islwyn. I could, of course, refer to the mill at Getley Groist, where Artie Moore picked up the first distress signals uh, of the sinking Titanic. Um, but unfortunately, these hidden gems are actually just that. They're hidden uh, because we don't shout about them enough. Considering Visit Wales only spends £7 million a year in advertising Wales abroad compared to £47 million a year by Visit Scotland, how do you expect the wealth of historical and natural treasures in the valleys to get the attention they rightly deserve? Well, the total tourism spend in Wales is over £20 million, not £7 million. If you take into account the, the spending on major events, the tourism grants, uh, and that's not even counting the money, for example, that the money is being invested in the airport in Cardiff, uh, which will all help to give those visiting Cardiff a far better experience of Wales. The total spend is well over 20 million if you take all these things together. And it's evidenced by the fact, of course, that we've seen tourism numbers increase in Wales, and Wales is now seen as a cool destination, to quote the paper. I don't normally read the Telegraph uh, last week, and we have seen uh, Wales and uh, parts of Wales, such as Rosilly Beach, uh, for example, being named in world guides. And that's a sign uh, that, P that we are building a strong tourism industry in Wales based on the expenditure that we have, which is 20 million and more. Question six, Byron Davis. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer. First Minister, would you make a statement on the future of public transport in Wales, please? Yes, we're committed to improving public transport services in Wales. Thank you. First Minister, I want to raise concerns that Age Cymru have, uh, they are extremely concerned that local bus services remain vulnerable to spending cuts. And you'll appreciate, of course, that there is a danger that reductions to uh, services mean that access to a whole range of things can become impossible for some older people. I believe firmly that cuts and changes to bus services should be subject to an equality impact assessment into the effect they will have on older people. Given that uh, the government has uh, just U-turned on the funding cut to concessionary fares following the High Court action, will you make a statement on the future of free bus travel and whether your government will fund adequately to ensure a sustainable bus network to support many elderly, vulnerable residents, particularly in rural areas who rely on their local bus service? Well, of course, the free bus pass scheme in Wales is far more generous uh, than exists across the border. That is something that people have very much... Uh, welcome. There are 720,000 concessionary pass, pass holders in Wales, and that the three-year package that funds that is worth £189 million. It's one of the proudest achievements uh, uh, for those of us on our benches here, something that was done at a time when the powers of this place were particularly limited. I can say to the member that the minister has recently announced a £15.4 million funding boost for transport schemes uh, in uh, Wales. That, is, uh, that has been done. We've allocated £350,000 to support the Booker Bus service uh, between 2012 and 2015. And, of course, the Minister has established a bus policy advisory group which will draw on best practice uh, in order to ensure that we have the bus services uh, that we uh, need to ensure that people are able to uh, access the services that they require. Julie Morgan. 
Thank you, Presiding Officer. Um, the City of Cardiff Council will shortly begin a consultation on the site for the new bus station in Cardiff, now that the BBC building is going to be based um, in front of the station. Uh, would the First Minister gr agree that um, a well-connected, um, easily accessible, customer-friendly bus service um, is absolutely essential to help fulfil the Welsh Government's policy of shifting people from cars um, uh, uh, to public transport, and especially when the number of people using the bus service in Cardiff is actually going down at the moment? Uh, uh, very much so. I think integration is absolutely key to public transport. There are some good examples of, around Wales of where this has happened. Caerphilly is, is probably the, the prime example that comes to, uh, to mind. Uh, it, it's important that people are able to come off a train and go to one place where they can catch a bus to anywhere in that city or town. Uh, my hometown of Bridgen was without a bus station for many years. It just didn't work. Nobody knew where the bus stops were. Uh, and as a result, it was very difficult for people to negotiate the, uh, the bus network. I, I do think that it's important that there is a bus station or at least one place where all buses leave uh, to parts of a city. And that place necessarily must be next to a railway station. We now have your with. Uh, the top priority uh, for infrastructure uh, investment in public transport in Wales now is rail electrification. Now, even before the new Secretary of State for Wales was appointed, a uh, spokesman for your government said that he was a man you could do business with. You need to strike a deal with him very, very soon on rail electrification after you failed to seal the deal last time. What's your strategy? Actually, the deal wouldn't be with him, it would be with Mr. Patrick McLaughlin, who is in fact the Department of Transport uh, Minister. The, uh, the Wales office has an observer role uh, in that regard, not, uh, not the role in terms of agreeing a, a settlement. But we do very much welcome uh, what we hope will be a new approach and a new attitude from the Wales office. I, I do have to say that I know that my uh, colleagues have dealt uh, with the new Secretary of State in the past and, and have found him to be uh, pragmatic and reasonable, if I can put it that way, uh, remembering, of course, the obvious political difficulties and differences that, that uh, are there. Uh, and yes, I, I think there is potential there now uh, to move forward with an agreement with regard to the uh, rail network with the support of the new Secretary of State. Helen Parrott. Uh, Diolch Lewis, I note the Minister for Transport yesterday released a formal feedback mechanism for rail passengers, which I'm sure you'll agree was very well timed. However, one piece of feedback that regular passengers on the Valleys lines often give is that their services are overcrowded. Now, the completion of electrification projects such as the Manchester to Liverpool line, which are due for completion um, this year, should release some diesel rolling stock into the leasing system. And I'm wondering what discussions the Welsh Government has had with the rail industry to secure a short-term lease on some of this diesel stock to alleviate overcrowding whilst we wait for our own electrification project to be completed? Well, well these are, of course, uh, issues that are always dealt with, where rolling stock can come from, but the franchise is uh, coming close to renewal, and it's important that there is a longer-term solution to overcrowding on the Valley Lines. Uh, we hope, of course, that electrification will be delivered uh, to ensure that we have a, a, a transport system uh, for the South Wales Metro that is a 21st century system rather than one from the 20th, 20th century that is struggling to keep up with demand. Sandy Mewies. Thank you. First Minister, Guide Dogs Cymru are com campaigning for public transport operators to introduce audio announcements on their services. These will allow blind and visually impaired people to travel more freely. Arriva Buses Wales are doing just that on some routes in North Wales this summer. So can I ask, First Minister, what steps are the Welsh Government taking to encourage all uh, bus operators and public transport operators to introduce audio services and services like them to ensure that people um, who, who have have a visual impairment uh, can travel as freely as you or I. I. I can say that the Minister met representatives of Guide Dogs Cymru and the RNIB earlier this year to discuss the Talking Buses campaign. The Minister has asked the Bus Policy Advisory Group to advise on how to encourage uh, a more sustainable bus network, which of course includes making buses more attractive to more passengers. That group has been considering a Talking Buses campaign along with proposals for a charter for disabled public transport passengers. And I can say the group recently submitted its advice to the Minister, who is now considering the recommendations. Question 7, William Powell. Will the First Minister please make a statement on the importance of uh, agricultural shows such as the Royal Welsh to Wales? Well, the Royal Welsh is one of the finest events of its kind in Europe, no question about that. I'm looking forward to attending this year's uh, show. It's an important showcase of what Wales has to offer. 
and of course we must remember the uh, the county shows that take place around Wales and I was uh, very glad to be at the Bridgend County Show which took place last weekend. I'd like to thank the First Minister very much for that response. One thing that would uh, enhance further the, the role of Welsh in terms of sustainability would be to make it more accessible uh, to those members of the public wishing to access the site via public transport. Um, while it's welcome that Arriva trains do lay on uh, a bus shuttle from the Heart of Wales line uh, to, um, at uh, Bilt, Bilt Road to Llanelwedd, uh, there are no additional services provided. First Minister, given the importance of the Royal Welsh, which attracts annually almost twice as many visitors as the Glastonbury Festival, and uh, given uh, your recent uh, engagement with Arriva Trains, could you consider using your influence to urge Arriva Trains Wales to look at the commercial opportunities around laying on additional services that would also benefit the show and the wider travelling public? Yes, I think it's, it's worth the reverse certainly considering that. They do it, of course, with a special train that runs uh, to Bilth Road from, well, it used to be Rumley, uh, through the Swansea District line and then uh, up, uh, to, up on the Heart of Wales line. Uh, I, I suspect that uh, one of the issues, of course, is that uh, most of the travel will take place at a certain time of day uh, mm. to the show. Uh, so uh, they uh, obviously put that train on from the, the south uh, and they will need to assess uh, whether it's in their commercial interest to lay on more services in the future. Russell George. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I'm also looking forward to attending Europe's largest agricultural show next week. One of the key uh, talking points at the show will be the long-term uh, long state of the red meat industry in Wales. We saw just last week the fall in prices for in-season Welsh lamb, uh, which is concerning on the back of the slump in Welsh beef prices. Uh, can I ask First Minister how the Welsh Government will be using the Royal Welsh Show to reiterate to retailers and processors to back Welsh farming and Welsh red meat? Well, HCC uh, certainly uh, do a very good job in terms of supporting the red meat industry in Wales. The key has always been to ensure there are more markets for Welsh meat. Uh, that is something that I started when I was Rural Affairs Minister when I first went to Dubai to open the market there and other countries have opened up now to, uh, to Welsh meat as well. By having more markets available then of course it's possible to sell in those markets that offer the best price. Uh, simple market economics and something that increasingly applies to Welsh farming. Leo Griffiths. Uh, diolchlywydd, mae'r pwyllgor amgylchedd a chynladwyedd, wrth gwrs, bob blwyddyn yn cynnal cyfarfod sydd fel arfer yn sesiwn graffu gwynidogol yn y sioe fawr, bob blwyddyn. Um, a, a mae yn lwyfan pwysig dwi'n meddwl i ddangos demokratiaeth ar waith a, a Kevin, mae'n gyfle i graffu ar waith uh, Llywodraeth Cymru uh, ym mhresenoldeb rhai o'r rhanfeiliaid pwysicaf yn y sector amaethyddol. Uh, nawr, dwi'n nhw'n wybodol, wrth gwrs, bod yn newid i adeg gwynidogol wedi digwydd yn yr wythnos y diwetha yma. Uh, ond a fyddech chi fel prif wynidog yn gallu sicrhau y bydd y gwynidog neu dyr prif wynidog uh, newydd yn gallu bod yn bresennol yn y cyfarfod hwnnw, uh, oherwydd byddai methu gwneud hynny dwi'n meddwl yn anfon neges anffodus iawn allan i'r sector. Mwynhau nhw'n wybodol, wrth gwrs, mae'n i'n ystyried. Uh, roedd yn newid iadau uh, wythnos diwetha ddim wedi cael i, uh, I benderfynu o flaen llaw, yn yr wythwyr i gael ei gynllunio, a wrth gros, o'n i ddim moyn dod ar rwy'n newydd mewn i'r cabinet uh, um, uh, ar hyn o bryd, uh, a wrth gros bydd um, y newidiadau yn cael ei gadw dan sylw uh, yn y dyfodol uh, ynglyn ar ffaith o'r gros bod yr amgylchedd wedi mynd un ffordd a materion gwledig wedi mynd ffordd arall. Uh, Mwynhau'r wybodol, wrth gros, bydd yn cael dan sylw dros, dros uh, y cyfnod nesa. Question 8, Julie James. Will the First Minister make a statement on Welsh Government action to tackle homelessness and rough sleeping in Wales? Yes, the Housing Bill will significantly strengthen the duties on local authorities to prevent and relieve homelessness for anyone at risk. We will introduce national monitoring of rough sleepers this year and we are exploring with our partners additional measures to uh, help people into settled accommodation. Thank you for that answer, First Minister. First Minister, in Swansea, we successfully recently lobbied the Halifax to remove so-called homeless spikes from the front of its premises in the city centre. As rough sleepers are very rarely choosing to be on the streets, it's a very dangerous place to be anyway, and uh, it seems completely heartless and quite medieval to prevent people from taking what shelter they can find in a city centre. Labour councillors in Swansea today are hoping to get a motion through Swansea Council calling on the Welsh Government to ban such spikes uh, from suitable premises in the city centre. And whilst we all agree that that's not the solution we want for rough 
enough sleepers, it does seem to send the right signal in terms of the humanity of the situation. First Minister, would you comment on that resolution and the Welsh Government's possible response to it? Yes, I think public pressure uh, can be brought to bear here. I understand that Halifax recently removed their anti-homeless spikes uh, following uh, pressure and public opinion. Of course, they're not the use the use of spikes is not the appropriate way of dealing with, uh, with rough sleepers. It doesn't solve the underlying uh, problem. And that's why, of course, uh, the bill will help to encourage uh, organisations to work together to encourage uh, rough sleepers to look for uh, accommodation in their own interest, of course, and for their own safety in uh, the future. Uh, and, of course, uh, the uh, bill looks to help that process by improving services for those people who are uh, not in priority need and for those who are found to be intentionally homeless. Nick Ramsey. Uh, thanks. First Minister, it's well documented that a significant uh, number of younger homeless people certainly have been in the care system uh, in one form uh, or another and clearly have been let down by some element of that system, not overall, but some element leading to their current situation. Care charities have commended the UK government decision to allow foster children to remain with their foster families until uh, 21, and the Action for Children and Fostering Network Wales have suggested that councils in Wales could have a statutory obligation uh, to do that. Have you made an assessment uh, of what the cost would be uh, of doing that in some way of Wales so that children in care are cared for in some way up until 21, and um, how that cost um, uh, is balanced uh, with the benefits uh, that would result in taking people off the street? I, I know the Minister is aware of what is proposed to happen in England and I know she is uh, looking at the implications of that as far as Wales is concerned. Uh, Roger Glyn Thomas. Uh, um, on the day we of faith for Nagama with the Kalika married the Tiatani Canolva and applied Laver and Linden, Yatal Pobol Rakuski, uh, Dross Norse and Avan Hono, Nid Pigion, my weird way, on Mana Gerig Anne Smooth with the Kaligosodana and Vuriadol, Ermuin uh, Atal Pobol Rakuski and Dross Norse. I've now he uh, can altravodeth, get us with Ogger by Laver and Linden, he's a good high Nadinu and with Freddy and Rimworth. Lohuna, Maraidi V Wade, a Bodain a Styriad a Peth Urth Gluer Beth Maraidi Wade. Keith Davis. Diolch Lewid. Prywyn i Diolch Fyn, Croes Awyr Beltai, ar y Gweddau ar Digatref, mae eith olwraig o Llanelli wedi bod mewn cyslwllt o fyn ddiweddar. Oherwydd newidiadau mewn diwbigiadau lles, mae mi hi methu cael mynediad i di cyngor, ac oherwydd reolau newid yng Ngelch Amseroedd, a mathe o fydd daliadau, mae wedi profi'n anodd ffeindio llety dros dro neu parhaus gyda darparwyr eraill. Ydych chi'n cytuno'r y fi bydd y biltau o gefnogaeth mewn achosion fel hwn? Dwi'n nod wrth gwrs i sicrhau bod ni'n rhoi cymorth i bobl sy'n ysefyllfa hwnna yna, a hefyd wrth gwrs i sicrhau bod ni'n gallu lleihau effeithiau newidiadau sy'n wedi dod o San Stefan. Diolch. Question 9, Antrim Sandbach. Thank you, Presiding Officer. First Minister, will you provide an update on how many times Welsh Government has been ordered to provide disclosure of information following an appeal to the Information Commissioner? Since 2011, uh, 52 appeals have gone to the Information Commissioner. Eight of those appeals have resulted in the Welsh Government releasing further information. Well, thank you uh, for that answer, um, First Minister. It's regrettable that um, in terms of uh, questions which are often tabled to ministers which are then uh, not answered and Freedom of Information Act requests are then put in leading to, be, the, to information being disclosed that it appears that the transparent and open government that you were hoping to achieve isn't in fact in place. Um, I asked you um, some time ago whether you would place in the library all the material that had been relied upon for Sir Derek Jones's report. Can you confirm whether or not you've now done that? Because that material has been requested uh, under the Freedom of Information Act. It's in the report. Uh, everything that, uh, need, that uh, members uh, need to be aware of is in, is in the report. That's why I thought the report is in the library. Can I, can I say, uh, she talks about a lack of transparency. Uh, just, just to say to her that of the... Uh, freedom of information requests that we receive, 0.2% uh, 
uh, have uh, led to information being released further as a result of an appeal. Uh, that is uh, a, a good figure. It compares with the UK government, who in fairness are slightly lower, 0.07%. The Scottish government is higher, 2.24%. In terms of compliance, I can say that in terms of ensuring that um, requests are completed within the statutory time of 20 working days, we are ahead of anywhere else in the UK. In 2013, our compliance rate was 93%, 91% in Whitehall, 74% in Scotland, 79% in 2012 in Northern Ireland. That shows that we are indeed a transparent government. Simon Thomas. Uh, uh, I got to hide this, and did not your death, my father. Not only were you very adi adi gave, he knew, man, on three pop cases, and we bought it. Well, cases are done a dead. Act by the need, right? But on a global and we are all right there. My angle with high we bought it. Just well matter, of course. But we bought it for gal, but it's the day gal. And my father, I'm when I did cut hide, he didn't go hide. Also, he go when we bought it. Now he dream a well cases are done a dead. And we best see that we store a lot of fed in a domestic fed in what case on we bought it and the money. Now he edwish are are them as he then doing well and tavi and the wedding of me is going but they yet me. I mean, I know that because we've seen it with Hayward, of course. We see him a bubble and go in and Robeth. I was doing them and Kelly Dream well. Robeth or Dan there be he and eventually when we go in a Hayward, we can be through either that he was my bubble and guide and we've been dealt with but then probably dealt with of course. Uh, and the third one, the rebus, the Roy, the Gorf, the Alay, the Gorf, 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 Thank you, First Minister. We now move to item...